Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today I'm excited to show you my favorite top 15 PowerPoint tips and tricks. If you're interested in following along, I've included a link to the PowerPoint presentation in the description. Also, if you wanna jump around, I've included timestamps as well. All right, let's jump on the computer and see what these are. For tip and trick number one, we are going to look at the morph and the enhanced morph transition. So what does it mean to morph? Well, let's take an example so we could see how this works. To apply a morph, first off, we need to duplicate the current slide. I'm gonna go up to slide one in the slide sorter, I'm gonna right click on it, and then I'm gonna go down to duplicate. You'll see now that these slides are exactly the same. I wanna morph the circle from slide one into the circle in slide two. Now I don't have to just morph it into the same position. Instead, I'm gonna reposition it. I'm also going to adjust the size on this circle. Next, I'm gonna go up to the top ribbon. I'm gonna click on transitions and I'm gonna click on morph. You can now see that between slide number one and slide number two, it morphs from a smaller circle in this position to a larger circle in the right. Let me throw it up into presentation mode and we can see how it works. This is a basic morph transition and you can apply some pretty cool effects using this. Now one of the downsides though is with a basic morph, you can only morph between identical shapes between the various slides. What if you wanna morph from say a circle into a square? Well, let me show you how we can do that. I'm gonna insert another slide and on this slide, I'm gonna go up to insert on the ribbon. Here I'm gonna click on shapes and I'm gonna insert a rectangle. Now I want this circle to morph into this rectangle. How do we do this? Well, first off on slide three, let's click on the slide and then go up to transitions. Once again, I'm gonna click on morph. But right now we see that when I run the basic morph, I'll throw it in the presentation mode. There I get my bigger circle and there it simply fades in and out to the rectangle. How do we get the circle to morph into a rectangle? Well, we need to ensure that both the rectangle and the circle share the same name. To make sure that they share the same name, let's click on the rectangle, then click on home on the ribbon, and we're gonna go over to the selection pane. I'm gonna click on select, and then click on selection pane. Within the selection pane, I see that my rectangle simply has a name rectangle three. I'm gonna change this name, and we need to insert exclamation marks. I'm gonna insert two exclamation marks, and then I'm gonna type in morph. To do an enhanced morph, you need to make sure that you include exclamation marks, but the name itself doesn't necessarily matter. You just have to make sure that this name matches for the shape here and the shape that you wanna morph from. I'm gonna copy this name, and now I'm gonna jump into slide two. I'm gonna click on the circle here, and with the selection pane open, I'm gonna click in here and paste in the same exact name. PowerPoint now knows that it should morph this shape into the rectangle. Let's jump into presentation mode again and see how this looks. I'm now on slide two, and let's jump into slide three. There you see the circle morph into a square. That is a pretty cool transition, and that's tip number one. Tip number two, I wanna show you how you could insert a perfectly symmetrical shape and also lines. To do this, first off, let's go up to the ribbon and click on insert and then we're gonna click on shapes. First, I wanna insert a circle or an oval. I'm gonna click on this and here I'm gonna start drawing it on my slide. Now, if I wanna make sure that this is a perfect circle, I could try to line it up, but I might not be quite right. If I wanna ensure that I have a perfectly symmetrical shape, I can simply press the shift key and this will ensure that I have a perfect circle. I could use this for any type of shape. I'm gonna go back to shapes and now I'm gonna insert a rectangle. I'll press the shift key again and here now I have a perfect square. Now not only can I use it with circles or squares, I could also click on shapes and I could use it for lines. Here I'm gonna insert an arrow and I'm gonna press the shift key again and this ensures that I have a perfectly straight line. If I didn't use shift, it'd be a little hard to align it. Now if I press shift and I go up, it'll move in 45 degree increments and give me a line. So here this way I could get nice clean lines on my slide. This is tip number two. Tip number three, I wanna show you how you could insert a countdown timer into your PowerPoint presentation. Oftentimes you're presenting in front of a group and maybe you wanna take a short break and you wanna let your audience know how much time they have. Luckily, it's very easy to insert a countdown timer into PowerPoint. Within PowerPoint, go up to the ribbon and click on insert and then we're gonna go over to the add-ins section and we're gonna click on get add-ins. Within the office add-ins prompt, let's click on search and we're 
going to type in timer and then search. This shows you a number of different timers that you can insert into your PowerPoint presentation. I personally like the break time timer. I'm going to click on add for that. Next, it'll ask me to agree to the license terms and privacy policy. I'm going to click on continue. Next, this inserts a countdown timer into my slide. I could position it however I want it to appear. I could set how much time I want the countdown timer to be for. Here by default, it's set to 10 minutes and zero seconds. And I could even choose a background that I want to apply. I'm gonna select reading. Next, I'm gonna click on start and we could see what the breakdown timer looks like. So this is a cool, neat little tool that you could implement into your slide to have a timer. Tip number four, you can record your desktop or your screen using Microsoft PowerPoint. To record your screen, go up to the top ribbon, click on insert, and all the way over on the right hand side, you'll see an option for screen recording. If we click on this, this will drop me on the desktop and I could select the area of my desktop that I wanna record. I'm simply going to select the entire screen and then I'm gonna click on record. It shows me the shortcut key that I could press, Windows logo, Shift and Q to stop the recording, or I could hover up above to stop the recording this way as well. So now I could click on an item on my desktop. Here's a nice picture of Times Square. And now I'm gonna press Windows logo, Shift and Q, and that'll stop the recording. You now see that my screen recording is inserted into Microsoft PowerPoint. Now I'm not just limited to using this screen recording within PowerPoint, I could right click on it and I could also save this screen recording as an MP4 if I wanna use this elsewhere. So pretty awesome functionality built directly into PowerPoint. Next, I wanna show you how you can merge shapes. On this slide, I have two different shapes. I have both a circle and a square. I'm gonna pull my square and I'm gonna position this over my circle and I'm gonna put it right about there. Next, I'm gonna select both of these shapes and because I have shape selected, I see the shape format option on my ribbon. Let's click into that. Now over on the left hand side, because I have multiple shapes selected, I have the option to merge shapes. When I click on this, there are many different ways that I can merge these shapes. For instance, I can do a union where I bring them together into one shape. I could also do a combine where it leaves out the intersecting portion of it. I could also do a fragment where it creates three separate shapes. Here I could do an intersect where it just keeps the intersecting portion. And the last one is to subtract the second shape from the first one. I'm gonna go with fragments to see how this works. Now that I've done fragment, I have three different shapes. I'm gonna remove this portion for now and I'm gonna delete that. Next, I'm gonna pull out this portion of my circle. This could be a neat technique, say for example in a presentation that I have this pie that maybe represents all of our sales and I wanna have a point out at this portion of the circle calling out what happened with this portion of our sales. You could do lots of neat things with merging shapes. Tip number six, Microsoft PowerPoint has a whole bunch of different stock images that you can insert into your presentation. To insert stock images, simply go up to the top ribbon, click on insert and then click on pictures and then within pictures there's an option for stock images. When you click on this, you have a massive variety of stock images that you can bring into your presentation. You could search for images, you could click on categories, or you could simply click on an individual image. Along with clicking on an image, you could also insert icons, cut out people, stickers, and illustrations. I'm satisfied with my selection. I'll go ahead and insert this. Here you see a very high resolution photo is inserted onto my slide. Tip number seven, did you know that you can remove the background from a photo? Here I have a beautiful picture of a hot air balloon and I wanna remove the background sky. I'm gonna select the photo and I have the picture format option on the ribbon. When I click on that over on the left hand side, I have the option to remove the background. I'm gonna click on that. This now does its best job at removing all of the background, but I see that it hasn't quite removed everything. If I go up to the ribbon, I could click on mark areas to remove, and then I could highlight the section of the image that I want it to remove. Here, I'll click over here, and that removes that background as well. Now you can see there's a little bit of background left behind the bucket of the hot air balloon, so I'm just gonna click in there to remove that as well. Once I'm satisfied with all of the results, I can click on Keep Changes, and that's now removed the background from my hot air balloon. Tip number eight, I wanna show how you can align objects on your slide like a pro. 
To align these objects, first off, let's highlight all of these squares. Once we have them highlighted, let's go up to the top ribbon and click on Shape Format. Over on the right hand side, we have the option to align. I'm going to click on Align and first off, I want to top align all of these shapes. Let's click on that first. Now I see all of the items are top aligned. I'm going to click on align again and I want to distribute horizontally to remove these big gaps between the items. And here now you can see that they're all top aligned and the spacing between each item is identical. This now looks very nice and I was able to effectively align my objects. Tip number nine, I want to show you how you could use the selection pane and work more effectively with layers. You see that I have three different circles on my slide. I have a blue circle at the bottom layer, then a red circle in the middle layer, and my yellow circle is on the top layer. To move these different items between layers, you could simply right click on them and you could send it all the way to the back or you could simply send it one layer back. Now this could take time, especially if you want to modify lots of different items on lots of different layers. To work with this more effectively, let's go to the Home tab on the ribbon and then over on the right hand side, click on Select. Within the Selection menu, there's an option called Selection Pane. Let's click on that. This opens up the Selection Pane and I see all of the different objects that I have on this slide. For instance, if I click on Oval 5, it turns out that's the yellow circle. If I double click, I could rename this object. I could go through now and I could rename all the objects on this slide to make it easier to know which item is on which layer. I've now renamed all of the different objects within the selection pane, so now I very quickly and easily know which object is which item here. I could hide items within here. Let's say I want to hide the yellow circle, so maybe I could work on the red circle and the blue circle, and then I could show the yellow circle again. Now to move items between layers, whatever item appears at the top of the list is on the topmost layer. I could click on this item and I could bring the yellow circle to the bottom or maybe I want to move the red circle down. I could very easily do that by dragging and dropping items within the selection pane. Tip number 10, I want to show you how you can use the eyedropper together with snip and sketch to be able to copy any color that appears on your desktop. I have a rectangle in the middle of my slide and it says PowerPoint, but this isn't the PowerPoint brand color. I see the brand color up here on the top app bar. How do I get this color into the rectangle? Well, first we're going to use the Snip and Sketch tool. This comes with Windows 10. To launch Snip and Sketch, we're going to press the Windows logo key together with Shift and S at the same time. This launches the Snip and Sketch tool and I'm going to go up here and select a rectangular snip. Now, I'm going to draw a rectangle around the top app color. I see now that this color is on my clipboard. Next, I'm going to click into PowerPoint and I'm going to press Control V to paste this onto my slide. This pastes the app color onto my slide. Next, I want to take this color and get it into my rectangle. I'm going to click on the rectangle and go up to the top bar to Shape Format. Within Shape Format, I'm going to click on Shape Fill, go down to the eyedropper tool, and I'm going to select the color from this rectangle. This now applies the same exact color from the top bar to this rectangle. Tip number 11, I want to show you how you can copy objects using the control key. I have a rectangle on the slide and I currently have it selected. If I press the control key and then click on the object and drag it over, this will give me a copy of the object. I could also select multiple items, so here I could highlight both items and I could press control and then drag down and that'll give me two copies of the item. I could also select all four of these, press control and now I have a whole bunch of copies of the original rectangle. Tip number 12, did you know that you can narrate PowerPoint slides together with your voice and also video? To narrate a slide, let's go up to slideshow on the top ribbon and then there's an option to record a slideshow. We could record from the current slide or from the beginning. I'm going to click on record from current slide. This opens up the record interface. I could click on record. I could also go through and I could annotate my screen. Let's click on record to see how this works. I'm going to click on record. I see a countdown message and hey, we are on the air. Here I'm going to annotate the slide. Maybe I'll insert a different color and this sounds great. Once I'm all done, I'm going to click on the stop button on top. Next, I'm going to click on the X in the top right hand corner and now this inserts my video and my annotation on the slide. If I jump into presentation mode, you'll see the slide come up with my annotations and the video will play. And hey, we are 
Number 13, when you're presenting in Microsoft PowerPoint, there are all sorts of shortcut keys that you could use in presentation mode. First off, let's jump into presentation mode. If you press the F1 key, this will show you all of the different shortcuts that you can use when you're presenting in PowerPoint. There are quite a few different shortcut keys here. You could take a look through these and see which ones will be the most valuable to you. For instance, a few of the things I could do, if I press B, it'll change the slide to black. I could press W to change the slide to white. I could also press Control P and that'll bring up a pen tool and I can then annotate the screen. I could even bring up a highlighter. I could bring up a laser pointer. There are all these different tools that I have while I'm presenting. Tip number 14, I wanna show you how you could take a boring slide like this and make it a lot more exciting by using design ideas. To use design ideas, click on home on the top ribbon, and then over on the far right hand side, you see an option for designer or design ideas. Let's click on this. This now shows me a whole bunch of design ideas on the right hand side. These are constantly evolving and they're constantly getting better. Now I'm gonna click on this first one and let's see how this works. Here it formats my slide in a much more aesthetically pleasing way. Now one of the things that's really neat too, and I don't know if you noticed this, but here the text says who will read this, and here you see a picture of a book. I don't think anyone will. The word think is in there, and I see a little cloud that typically goes along with thinking. And then please stop reading, and you see a stack of books. So all of these icons are chosen based on what the text is. So it's, it's in a very smart way identifying what type of content should show up. Design Design Ideas helps you create better slides. Tip number 15, I wanna show you some advanced ways that you can crop a photo. When I click on a photo, up on the top tabs, an option appears for picture format. When I click on this, I could crop a photo over on the right hand side if I click on crop. By default, it allows me to crop the photo as a rectangle. However, let's say I wanna apply different cropping to this photo. I could click on this drop down, and maybe I wanna first off crop to an aspect ratio. I could crop it to one by one. I could reposition the photo within here to crop it within this aspect ratio. I'm gonna expand the photo a little bit and I'll place this picture of my son right in the middle. Next, I could go up to the crop tool and now I could crop to a shape. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna crop this to a circle. Now you see some pretty creative cropping where I've cropped my son to be in this perfect circle here. All right, that was a quick look at 15 of my favorite tips and tricks in Microsoft PowerPoint. In the comments down below, let me know if there are others that you use that you would recommend that others take a look at, or also let me know if any of these tips and tricks are ones that you personally use. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a note down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye.